Thank you. Hello, everybody. Have a seat. Have a seat. Look at you guys with all your gadgets. <laughs> Sit down. Come on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm so gray. But I feel good otherwise. Uh, welcome to the White House, everybody. Uh, as a birthday treat to me, I thought I'd invite business leaders, investors, and government officials here for the first ever White House Demo Day. Yes. I think it's fair to say that when I was eight, I would have been confused by that choice. <laughs> but now I think it's really cool. And uh, I am so grateful to, to have all of you participating. Um, on a typical demo day, uh, entrepreneurs, like many of you, pitch your ideas to potential investors in venture capital or elsewhere. Uh, and it is a high stress, make or break moment. It can change the course of your life. You don't, folks are peppering you with questions. You don't know uh, what's going to be coming. Uh, today was much more relaxed because you just had to pitch the President of the United States <laughs> with your ideas. So, uh, yes, no, no problem. In front of TV cameras that everybody's going to watch. Uh, fortunately, everybody did a stellar job uh, that I had a chance to meet. And uh, here in this room, we've got some of the best and brightest entrepreneurs America has to offer. Uh, folks from all across the country, who are working every day to transform the way we live and learn and communicate. Uh, they have taken over my house. Uh, we've got people who are developing the next generation of lithium ion batteries, uh, a system of radio sensors that notices when a senior takes a fall while they're in their home, uh, a robotic teddy bear that helps kids with diabetes uh, learn about managing their health and, and, and staying active. Uh, there was an app that helps military families transition to their new communities. Another app that helps you order replacement parts just by snapping a photo of the old one. Uh, and then there are the folks at Astrobotics Technology in Pittsburgh. Uh, they are shooting for the moon, literally, with plans to land a rover on the lunar surface in the next couple of years, uh, which is you know, pretty exciting. I, I wouldn't mind, you know, seeing how that turns out. <laughs> you know, in America, that's who we've always been. We explore next frontiers. We're pioneers with a vision for tomorrow, whether it's Lewis and Clark, Sally Ride. Uh, we're the nation of Franklin and Edison and Carver and Salk, Jobs, Gates. And the folks here today are uh, heirs to that legacy and they are the driving force in a 21st century economy. Startups, young firms, account for almost 40 percent of new hires. And as we fought back from the worst economic crisis of our lifetimes, those firms have helped our private sector create more than 12.8 million jobs over the last 64 straight months, which is the longest streak of private sector job growth on record. So as President, I've worked to make it easier for entrepreneurs to strike out on their own. We've made it easier for folks to buy health insurance, uh, making it portable so you can strike out uh, and do your thing. Uh, we've made it easier to pay off student loan debt, although there was an app that I just saw of somebody who's really good at uh, working with businesses to help uh, manage student loan debt in an eff efficient way. Uh, we have tried to download government data sets for new apps and innovations. Uh, following in the path of you know, the National Weather Service and, and other data that's uh, uh, turned into commercial ventures. Um, we've worked to connect to high-speed broadband and open access uh, for free uh, and open Internet. And we're working on trade agreements to open up new markets for companies to sell their products overseas. Uh, thanks to the Bipartisan Jobs Act that I signed, it's easier for innovative companies to take the next step and go public. And when it's fully implemented, more startups and small businesses will be able to accept support from regular investors through uh, crowdfunding. So today, 
America is home to more high-tech companies than any place else in the world. And business leaders have declared that China is no longer the world's number one place to invest, America is. With technological advancements like cloud computing and big data and 3D printing, the fact is there's never been a better time to launch an idea and bring it to scale right here in the United States right now. But we've got to make sure that we're taking full advantage of this moment by tapping all the talent America has to offer, no matter who they are or where they set up shop. And you know, obviously, there are chronic challenges for any entrepreneur. Capital's tough to come by. But it's even tougher if you're not in one of a handful of cities that have a well-developed uh, venture capital uh, presence. Uh, it's always hard to get in front of the right people. But sometimes it's harder if you're uh, a woman or an underrepresented minor minority who all too often have to fight just to get a seat at the table. Right now, one study shows that fewer than 3% of venture capital-backed companies have a woman as their CEO. Another study showed that fewer than 1% have an African-American founder. Yet we've seen again and again that companies with diverse leadership often outperform those that don't. That's the market that is out there, not just here in the United States, but globally. Uh, so that lack of participation from everybody isn't good for business. We've got to make sure that everybody's getting a fair shot. The, the next Steve Jobs might be named Stephanie or uh, Esteban. They might never set foot in Silicon Valley. We've got to unleash the full potential of every American uh, not leave more than half the team on the bench. And that's something a, a growing number of tech companies have begun to recognize. The real question that needs to be asked, as well as answered, is what is it that we can do that is unique, that is impactful? I am Estella Pfeiffer. This is my brilliant bus. We are going to empower every individual and every organization to do more and achieve more. I had an idea, a bus that brings technology to kids that need it most. But I look in the mirror. When I look in the mirror, what do I see? What do I see? A brilliant mind. A brilliant mind. Looking back at me. It's this process of continuous renewal, of showing courage in the face of reality. If you dream big enough and believe in your dreams, you can make it happen. Showing that courage in the face of opportunity. Hello, my name is Stephanie Lampkin and I am the founder and CEO of Blendor, a mobile job matching app that facilitates diversity in recruiting and tech. So several companies have recently published their diversity numbers, which have been a major shock. Google, Facebook, Twitter, across the board, are 90% white and Asian and 70% male. Personally, having spent four years in Silicon Valley and five years at Microsoft, I'm not surprised, but I am passionate about making a difference. So many organizations have emerged to tackle the diversity gap in tech issue through STEM education and even entrepreneurship, but no one is really focusing on recruiting solutions. So Blender takes a mobile-first approach with a two-sided platform similar to Tinder. Using LinkedIn's API, recruiters can quickly post openings and candidates can quickly share their professional profiles. If the user thinks it's a good match, he or she swipes right. If not, he or she swipes left. And if both the recruiter and candidate believe that it's a good match, contact information is revealed to move forward with the recruiting process. We even provide filters and tracking tools. There are new nuanced benefits inherent in having a mobile job matching app. For example, by taking the job search off the desktop, you increase the frequency of browsing, even if a user is not actively job searching. And recruiters are able to work directly with candidates that they know have an interest in specific job openings. Blendor's target companies are tech-focused or tech-enabled. Our target candidates are women, veterans, and underrepresented ethnic minorities. Many of these top companies claim to be spending millions of dollars in diversity recruiting via HBCUs, career fairs, and the like. 
we will be targeting these recruiters directly and we'll be marketing our app to professional and academic organizations that are focused on women that